Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store, coming to you six feet apart in the wide open prairies of Southern Alberta. And we're doing that today because we're testing out two new vlogging cameras, the Sony ZV-1, and we're putting it up against the Panasonic G100. You might be wondering why we chose these two cameras to compare. Mine has the micro four thirds sensor to it and a full interchangeable lens system, where yours is a small camera with a one inch sensor to it and a fixed zoom lens. It's not always about size, Dave, <laughs> but these cameras are very different. However, they do have some similarities when it comes to vlogging capabilities. We both have 20 megapixel sensors that can shoot 4K video. We have fully articulating screens that go out to the side excellent for vlogging and then of course we have some new audio capabilities both in the hardware as well as some of the features we're going to separate and talk about each of our strengths and weaknesses of our individual systems and see which camera is going to be the vlogging winner when dave and i were deciding who was going to get each camera of course dave wanted to go with the interchangeable lens camera the bigger sensor and i honestly wanted to go with the more compact option i love being able to just slip it in my back pocket it looks very similar to the rx100 series in fact the lens on it is the same 24 to 70 millimeter lens equivalent that you see on the rx100 mark 5. And this camera has a lot of similarities with the RX100 line, but it has some differences too. Two of the biggest ones is that this doesn't have an electronic viewfinder at all. They've also removed the pop-up flash. And that's to also make room for a new microphone system that sits on top of the camera. I love that it has a fully articulating screen, a tally lamp on the front, and a big red record button. Excellent for vlogging. Okay, so it's my official vlog test time with the Sony ZV-1. And I'm really enjoying vlogging with this camera. It's pretty easy to do. I'm holding it just on a Gorilla Pod because I do not have the handle with me, but I would love using that. That would make things just a little bit nicer. Um, but for today, I'm just using like a little Gorilla Pod accessory. Um, in terms of settings, I'm shooting at 30p and I'm shooting in the 4K mode. And so I'm using manual exposure and I have the base ISO of 125 and I'm also shooting at 1 60th of a second. So that's double what my actual frame rate is. And that's really important so you don't have a really jittery looking shot. And that's achievable because of the built-in ND filter. And I love that you can just turn on that built-in ND filter. Um, it works great, especially for sunny days. And I pretty much always have that on when I'm shooting outside uh, when there's direct sunlight. Um, I also am using the standard image stabilization mode, which gives me optical stabilization. Um, so I'm not using active right now because I'm finding to hold this comfortably, this is good enough of a crop. I don't think you want to get any closer to my face. I certainly don't want you to. And so holding the camera at this distance is going to be as close as we want to get. Let's talk audio. How do you guys think the audio sounds? We're using this little device on top of the camera that has three microphones in it, two in the front, one in the back, and it has a nice little dead cat on top. It looks ridiculous. It looks like your camera is wearing like a little toupee or a little monster on top, um, but it always kind of reminds me that that's where I should be looking. Um, of course, I'm wearing sunglasses right now, which is, I think, Vlogger 101, so that you're not always looking at yourself on the screen. Um, but the cool thing is, is that with these sunglasses, I'm noticing that the, the autofocus box on the, the eye autofocus is still finding my eye and tracking it. If you are someone that's new to video, you don't have to go all manual. There's a lot of great automatic features built into the camera and it makes it really easy to use. In fact, one of the things that I think is really clever on this camera is this little defocus button, which is sort of similar to some of the features that you find on smartphones now for photo and video. You just tap Tap that button and it will automatically open up your aperture and adjust your exposure settings to make sure that it looks great and you have a nice out of focus background. When it comes to autofocus, this camera wins hands down. With the combination of contrast detect as well as phase detection autofocus points, it does well at tracking. And I found that it really stayed sticky on the face and didn't drift off into the background like some other cameras do. 
And I'm also finding that this camera with the new features like that product showcase mode is key for shooting things like vlogs where you're reviewing products because it does an excellent job of focusing on that product and then very naturally going back to the face. I think that this was a smart move on Sony's part and I'm glad that they've included it in the camera. Okay, this is my camera view baby dance to keep Ivy nice and quiet for you. But um, my mic placement is drifting. There we go. You should all invest in one of these. They're very expensive, but they last a long time. And um, babies are so cute. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about the ports and the physical features on the camera. I love the new grip on this camera. It's a little more comfortable to hold and they've placed all of the ports on the correct side. So you don't have any ports interfering with the flip screen. Really smart move, Sony. I'm so glad that you did that. And they've really been listening, but there are some things I don't like. Don't tell Dave, but I have to tell you about a few little things. One of them is it has a very small battery in this camera. And so I'm chewing through battery really, really quickly. However, I'm lucky since we're out here in the prairie, I have a little battery pack from Cozy Speed. And so I'm able to put that in, plug it into the USB 2.0 input, and I can still record or I can just charge the camera while I'm on the go. But if you don't have a backup battery pack, then I would highly suggest making sure that you have at least a couple, maybe three, four batteries if you're shooting for a long period of time. The other little annoyance that we're not going to tell Dave about is the placement of this tripod socket. It is driving me crazy. As I mentioned, you're going to chew through batteries fairly quickly and you're going to want to change them if you don't have an external battery pack to plug into. So in order to do that, you have to remove whatever you have in that tripod socket because the battery and memory card door flips over top of that tripod socket hole and it's something that I wish that they had addressed. Is this thing on? Oh, it's me, Dave, and I'm vlogging. Probably for the second or third time in my life, and I'm not sure if it's really my thing, but if I had to choose, I think I've chosen wisely with the Panasonic G100, which is a vlogging-specific camera. Now, if you know nothing about vlogging, nothing about aperture or shutter speed, this camera set to full auto, which I'm on right now, is gonna deliver pretty decent results, as you can see. Now, I'm also holding the camera with a small tripod underneath it to keep it at arm's length and beyond. That way, you don't have to contend with this. Let's get into the, some of the features. Why I decided to choose the G100. Now, when I had the option to choose between these two cameras, I went for the Panasonic G100. I like the bigger grip. I find it a little nicer to, to work with myself, and I'm a big fan of electronic viewfinders. Uh, with my style of shooting, I tend to use them a lot, not just the rear screen. And I don't like being limited to just only using the rear screen. Even though this is a really nice, bright screen that's very usable in good daylight, I like holding my camera up to my eye and being able to see it, especially with much longer lenses. And I can do that with this camera because we have the full line of Panasonic lenses to choose from which will work just great on this camera. Now when it comes to video we are looking at 4k 30 frames per second with the ability to go down to four times slow motion if we stick with HD. Now something I really like and uh, is much improved on this camera is the built-in audio. Well, let's talk about audio. Now when it comes to vlogging or any kind of video work people underestimate the value of quality audio. The G100 features Ozo audio technology. Not only does it have a left and a right input, but also has a third pickup, which will help the camera decide where the audio source is coming from. If I'm narrating something from behind the camera, I can set it for that or the front or surround or auto or tracking, which is very cool, which is gonna help me out in a vlogging situation like this. If I move side to side on the frame, the audio should stay pretty consistent all the way through. Now something else that's important when it comes to video is stabilization. Now obviously I'm walking so I don't have the ability to have a tripod so I'm holding the camera at arm's length. Now we do have standard stabilization employed right now that seems to be doing a fairly decent job. So I've turned the stabilization up to high. Now this is going to be both optical and digital and because of that there's a little bit slight crop to the sensor. Now stabilization should be a little better on this. It seems to be doing a pretty decent job. Panasonic has 49 contrast detect autofocus points and they work with Panasonic's DFD autofocus system. And DFD stands for depth from defocus. 
They use the out-of-focus areas in the frame to acquire focus. Now they've improved the algorithms quite a bit, so when you are doing face and eye detection, it tends to work a little bit better than it has in the past. Now, this is where Sony has a leg up on Panasonic. The camera that Evelyn has today has 425 contrast detect focus points and 315 phase detect autofocus points. So it's a much more superior autofocus system I'm finding than the Panasonic has. Now I like the way this camera feels. It has a pretty decent grip, which I like, but there are a few design quirks that I wonder about with Panasonic. First one, the world's smallest pop-up flash. This thing is so incredibly small. I've seen point shoot cameras with bigger flashes than this. If you want to illuminate something from about a foot away, great. It's going to work wonderful. But other than that, it's going to be kind of useless. We do have a microphone port, which is nice. If I want to run a lav kit or something on here, it's great. I can run my wires over to here, but you have to watch that it doesn't interfere with the rotation of your screen. The other thing is battery life isn't stellar on these cameras. Uh, and with this one, we can only charge the battery through the USB port. We can't actually run the camera through the USB port. I think that's a bit of an oversight. So if you are going to be doing any kind of vlogging and video work, make sure you carry a couple extra batteries. Would you switch that camera? Would you trade it up? No. No? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. And I'll tell you why. Okay. For vlogging, I think that the Sony camera wins over the Panasonic. I would almost buy this camera exclusively because of the product demonstration mode. Mm. I think the autofocus system with it works so well. And for people that are doing a lot of vlogging, especially showcasing products, that feature is, is worth it. Yeah. Now I find this tends to be a bit more of a hybrid camera. It is a very For competent sure. vlogging camera, but if I want to explore photography a little bit more, I'm going to be limited a little bit by that camera because I don't have interchangeable lenses for one. Mm -hmm. Here I have the whole selection of Panasonic lenses to choose from so I can go out and shoot some wildlife, shoot macro, what have you. Whatever I need, I have the options to make that work. And I have an electronic viewfinder, which is going to help me with that, especially with if I want to hold and have more of a traditional style of shooting experience. From a screen perspective, <laughs> I do have to say I'm a little jealous of your screen because you have the touch functionality for your menu systems. Mine, I can uh, choose my focus points on the touch screen, but I can't actually go into the menu. And so when I am vlogging, it's really frustrating. You have to flip the screen back in and then use the back panel to make any changes. That seems very strange. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we want to know, what do you guys think? Are you looking for a vlogging camera? Which one ticks more boxes for you? Let us know by commenting below. Make sure you follow us both on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can catch you again very soon. Well, I still have you here on this cool screensaver background. I want to let you know that if you liked what you saw, you can watch more of our videos and see our latest one by clicking up here. And if you want to shop and check out some gear that we sell at the camera store, click down here.